that's it, as simple as that. So as you've seen, very simple to add in. And again, the key thing here, no neutral wire. So excellent and simple to add in. So a lot of people who have wiring where you don't have a neutral wire, this is ideal. The only addition you need to be aware of that you need to get the Zigbee gateway for this to work. Hi there, today we're unboxing a wireless smart switch. So details are in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing. So one thing to note about this particular smart switch, it doesn't require a neutral cable. The reason for that is it doesn't work off Wi-Fi. It actually uses Zigbee protocol. So due to this, you will require a Zigbee hub. So I've got my hub here. I'll include some details for this hub in the description below. So if you're looking to set this up, you know which product to go for. The package comes in a plain box, nothing much on there. So let's open it up and see what you get in there. Okay, so I've laid out all the items you get in the package. Just let me quickly run through them. You get a small bag containing two screws. You get a user manual showing circuit diagrams and details on how to set this up. Works via Smart Life or the Tuya app and details are all in English. The switch itself, it's all matte white finish on there. Looking here, it looks like there's an LED indicator. In terms of pressing the button, it's the whole area which is a button. So if I press down just to show, it's like a rocker switch on there. Coming around the back, you can see you've got the live connection there and the switch live there. It's got model details, part number, input voltage, output, and wireless type Zigbee. Now in terms of installing this, you'll have to just flip open this area. So just to show my screwdriver, that reveals this. And when you install it, two screw positions can be fitted in. And then when you want to assemble it back again, just put the cover back on and push it on. Build quality wise, it seems fairly good. Strong plastic all the way around. Let's make a start at installing this light switch. So I'm at the light switch where I'm gonna do the installation. Power's been isolated. So let me take the front two screws off. Okay, so I've removed the switch and this is what it reveals. So there's two cables, a brown cable and a blue with a sleeving on there. So this is the live and the blue with the sleeve is a switch live. So let's remove the cables on this. Looking at the back of the switch now, so L in, that's the live. And L1 is the blue with the sleeving on. Wires are screwed on, let's install it back on the wall. Okay, so the switch is installed now and we can put the cover back on it. And there you go. That's fully installed now. And just so you can hear what the click sounds like. I've turned the power back on and just to show the light in action. So as you can see at the bottom, there's no indicator light on at all. And if I press it, light comes on and it's red. Pressing around, obviously at an angle. So it's only when you press this lower region, it turns on and turns off. Feel wise, it doesn't feel too bad and works fine. And this is obviously no smart connectivity on here so far. It's just working straight out of the box. Let's make a start at setting up this device. So you need the Zigbee gateway to use it. I've got it already configured. So the app I'm using is Smart Life. So on the Play Store, if I search for Smart Life, this is the app. It's already installed if I click open. Now there's the smart gateway I've got. Now I've already mentioned this, but I'll say it again. There is a link in the description below for this gateway. See if you're looking to purchase it and also a link regarding the review I did of it. So now if I click on it, this is what we're presented with and we need to add the device. So we click on add sub device and ensure device is in pairing mode. LED is blinking. It shows some devices, a sensor, a socket, lighting. Now if I click more device reset methods, click on that. It's actually a switch here. And what it's saying, you just hold on to the button here for 10 seconds or more, and hopefully it should start flashing away. So you can see it's red at the moment. So let's give it a moment. If we just hold on to it, there you go, it's flashing away. Now, what you'll notice while it's in a config mode, if I press it, nothing happens. 
Next thing you want to do is click cancel, come back from there and just click sub device and LED already blink. We'll just click that. Let's give it a moment. And there you go, successfully added in. If I now click done and that's what it's represented as. So X711, click done on that. And now if I click on there, it presents you with the interface. So that's one way of going in there. If I come back from there, back again, and it's also presented like this so as a shortcut directly for the switch. Now, if I click on the shortcut button here, turns it off, turns it back on again, click down there, there's another button as a shortcut. And then now if we go into the device, this is what we presented with. If I click on the edit here in the corner, you can rename the device if you wanted to. I'll call it Studio Light Switch. Let me click Save to that. Go back and then you have device information that will have IP address and MAC address details, tap to run an automation. So this is any automation you've set up with this device. Looking below, you've got third party controls and these are the four third party controls it works with. Then you've got device offline notification. If it goes offline, you can be notified. Then we have multi-control association going in there. You see the device and if I click on the plus, can associate with another device as well. Clicking around, the only one I have is the three button switch here. Coming back from there, then you've got share device, so you can share with other people, you can create a group with multiple devices, FAQ and feedback, check for firmware update, remove device and restore factory defaults. Coming back from here, long press to edit switch name, so that's over here, so if I hold on to that, you can change the name of the switch. So at the moment it's just called switch one, coming back, if I press it, turns it off, turns it back on again. And below you can see we've got timer. So you can add your timer in, set the time when you want it to come on. So you could say certain days of the week. Then you've got note and you can have a note against it. Notification so you can be notified when it comes on. And then finally the option you want executed. So on or off. Simple as that, let's come back. And then you've got countdown. So this is the countdown timer. So if you wanted the lights to turn off after 30 minutes, you can just set a timer on this, for instance, click OK, and it will just turn off. So that's it, as simple as that. So as you've seen, very simple to add in. And again, the key thing here, no neutral wire. So excellent and simple to add in. So a lot of people who have wiring where you don't have a neutral wire, this is ideal. The only addition you need to be aware of that you need to get the Zigbee gateway for this to work. Next, let me drop this down, turn off my Wi-Fi, let it connect via 4G. If I press the button here, turns off, turns on, and as you see, nothing in addition to do. So as soon as you set it up with the device, it just works straight out of the box via cloud connectivity. No additional things to do like opening any ports on your router. So excellent bit of functionality here. Clicking on smart, and then clicking on automation, clicking on the plus, just to show if there's any existence of this. And there you go, studio light switch. If I click on there, you've got countdown and you've got switch one. So you could have certain actions happening when someone turns on a light switch. So good to see that functionality is available. So I could say, as it's turned on, go to vintage lamp and then switch that on. So you could set rules up so as you turn on one smart device, which is the switch, you can get other smart devices turning on. So excellent functionality, and it's good to have that sort of facility available. Next, let me show the light switch working with both the Google Home and the Amazon Alexa. So I've got my devices set up just over here, and on my Android phone, if I go to the Google Home first, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you can see it there, studio light switch. So this shortcut here, so if I click on off, click on on, turns it back on, click on there, turn it off and turn it on. And then clicking here, you can rename the device as you can normally do with these smart things. And if I unmute my Google Home, the microphone is back on. I can say, turn off studio light switch. Okay, turning studio light switch off. Turn on studio light switch. Okay, turning studio light switch on. There you go, simple as that to get working with the Google Home. Next, let me show this device working with the Amazon Alexa app. So if I click on Amazon Alexa, go to devices, as I've already added this in, go to switches, and there it is, studio light switch. Clicking on that, turns it off. Click again, turns it on. Clicking here, again, shortcut to turn it on and off. Clicking over here, you can rename it, shows it's connected to Smart Life. Same thing again, if I unmute my Alexa, 
I can say, turn off studio light switch. Okay. Turn on studio light switch. Okay. There you go. Simple as that to use with both the Google Home and the Amazon Alexa. Okay, so you've seen the unboxing and setup of this wireless smart switch. Very simple to set up and configure. I like the fact you don't require a neutral wire with this, which is a key feature here. So if you had an older property that didn't have a neutral wire, this would be perfect for that. The only thing to note is you will require a Zigbee gateway to enable you to use this. So there you go, I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below. Thanks for viewing and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.